Hello and welcome back to Math 121. This is uh, section 3.4 and we're going to be talking about zeros of a polynomial function. So we talked about this in the last video. Uh, want to make sure that we have a um, good plan in place to find the zeros of a function, polynomial function. Okay, so uh, what we're doing when we're finding zeros of a polynomial, we're finding where the graph crosses the x-axis. So where the graph crosses x-axis. Okay? So when we do this, um, you know, th th this becomes a little bit more difficult uh, than your standard quadratic, okay? That's what you were doing when you were solving quadratic equations, um, finding out where the graph crosses the x-axis. But when we've got other polynomial functions, we've got a lot of zeros that we can find, okay? So what I want to do, uh, and let's look at our objectives real quick. Our, the first thing I want to do is look at the rational zero theorem to find possible rational zeros, okay? We're going to be able to find the zeros of a function. We're going to be able to solve polynomial equations. These two pretty much mean the same thing. Um, and then we're going to use linear factorization theorem to find polynomials with given zeros. So... Um, let's do this, all right, um, I want to think of an example, all right, and so, um, I'm going to think of this function, I'm going to just write this down, f of x is equal to, uh, 3x cubed minus 19x squared, uh, plus 33x minus 9, okay, and the first thing that I want to talk about is this 3 up here, that 3 is my degree, Okay, degree of my polynomial. So my degree is 3, and that's going to give me that we're going to have three zeros. Okay, and that's, um, and that's going to be three times that the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to list possible zeros. Okay. And when I list possible zeros, that's my rational roots theorem, I'm going to take the factors of my last number, okay, which in this case is negative 9, and I'm going to divide that by the factors of my leading coefficient, okay, which is this number. Okay, so if I think about the factors of 9, uh, that's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9. Okay, those are all the numbers that, you know, some combination of those multiply to 9. And then I have the factors of 3. Okay, so I'm going to do plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. And so I can take any ratio of these numbers, all right, and I would do, you know, like 1 and 3, uh, you know, like 1 over 1, 3 over 1, 9 over 1, uh, 1 third, 3 over 3, which would be the same thing as 1 over 1, and then 9 over 3, which is the same thing as 3 over 1. So it's going to, my, my roots are going to be some semblance of these numbers, okay? So you kind of have your, you can list out your possible zeros. Okay, now what I want to do um, is I'm actually going to graph this, uh, function to help me figure out which one to use. Because what you can start doing, and it's kind of a pain, but what you can do is you can start like plugging these numbers in and doing synthetic division and figuring out which one of these numbers uh, gives you a remainder of zero when you divide it into here. But what I want to do is, um, instead of doing that, I'm going to graph this function to figure out what the, uh, to kind of get me a, a, a point to start with. All right, so I've went ahead and graphed this function, and so what I notice here is that I have a zero at three, okay? So I'm gonna use x equals three. Let's change up our colors here. Okay, I'm gonna use x equals three for synthetic division, okay? Okay. 
And so here's what we've got. All right, so let's do that here. Um, I'm going to use three for synthetic division. Uh, I'm going to list out my coefficients of my polynomial, which was three, negative 19, uh, 33, and negative 9. Okay, if I drop my 3 down, uh, you know, 3 times 3 gives me 9. Uh, negative 19 plus 9 gives me negative 10. 3 times negative 10 gives me negative 30. Um, 33 minus 30 gives me 3. Uh, 3 times 3 gives me positive 9, and we're going to get left with 0. Okay, so now... Um, what I have done is this, okay? Once I've done that and I've confirmed that I get a, a, uh, a remainder of zero, I come back in and I can now rewrite my function. Now, what I got here is I used x equals three, okay? So I have a zero. Uh, let, me, let me do this all over here, okay? So I'm going to list out up here... Um, my zeros, okay, and I'm going to list out my factors here, okay. So when I have a zero of x equals three, okay, what I want to do is I want to turn this zero into a factor. I'm going to show you what that means, okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract three from both sides, and that's going to give me x minus 3 as a factor, okay? And that's going to equal 0, okay? So let me, let me just write that down here for now. So what I've done is I've taken this polynomial here, and I have now factored it into x minus 3 times my quotient that I'm left with, which is going to be 3x squared minus 10x plus 3. So I've got... Um, 3x squared minus 10x plus 3. Okay, now what I want to do is now that I, I, have a, I have a quadratic, and I want to factor this quadratic. All right, so uh, I'm just going to use the box method here to factor this. Um, I'm going to put 3x squared here. I'm going to put a 3 here. So here I've got, I'm going to do a 3x and um, an x. And then I'm going to do negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, and so I've got negative 1 times x gives me negative x. Uh, negative, 3x or negative 3 times 3x gives me negative 9x. Now I'm going to combine these as like terms, and that gives me negative 10x, which is what I was looking for here. So now my polynomial can be rewritten as, the, as a bunch of factors. And that says x minus 3, um, and let me do this. Let me write that f of x is equal to x minus 3 times x minus 3 times 3x minus 1, okay? Now, what I've done, once I factored this, this tells me where I have zeros, okay? And what I do is I take each of my factors, just like we did, and we set these equal to 0. So I got x minus 3, set it equal to 0. Um, x minus 3 equals 0. And then I've got 3x minus 1 equals 0. Okay. And so um, what I've got there is I've got, you know, if I add 3 to both sides, I get that x equals 3. Add 3 to both sides, I get that x equals 3. Um, here, if I add 1 to both sides, and then if I get 3x is equal to 1, divide by 3, I get that x is equal to 1 third. Okay? These are my zeros. These are my factors. Okay? And, and I wrote all that up here. Okay? So I have zeros. Um, and so this happens, uh, you know, over here when I had x equals 3. I had this factor twice, okay, I'm just going to keep it there, um, but then I had, you know, a factor of, say, 3x minus 1. Set that equal to 0, and that's going to give me a 0 of x equals 1 third. Now, the question is, is why do I set this, why do I set each of these factors equal to 0 to find my zeros? Okay, and the reason is this. If you go back to the graph over here, and I want you to look. 
when x is one third or point three repeating, okay, I get a y value of zero. Okay, same thing with three. When x is equal to three, I get a y value of zero, and that's how I solve those. You know, when I'm looking for my x-intercepts, you know, at my x-intercepts, the y value equals zero at my x-intercepts. And that's why we set each of those equal to zero. All right, and so that's the idea. All right, so it's kind of like, you know, what I was doing over here was a little bit redundant, but the idea is, is this, okay, to put this all together. All right, what I want to do, take my function, figure out my degree. Now, we got three zeros here, two of which were the same, okay? And we'll talk more about that when we start uh, graphing uh, more of these polynomial functions. Um, but what I, what, I, what I understand here is that, you know, I have my function, label my degree, list out my possible zeros, okay? But then what I want to do is I want to graph my function to figure out which one of these points to use. Okay, that's just an efficient use of your time. Otherwise, you're doing synthetic division with all these numbers, and you're just going to sit there, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot. Okay? Um, and then when I, when I finally get a value that I can use, and I get a remainder of 0, I rewrite my function using that 0. Now, when I had a 0 of x equals 3 my factor is x minus 3. So we want to make sure that we use the opposite factor for that, okay? Then what I do is I take my remaining quadratic or whatever I've got, and I factor that as much as I can, get this down into a product of linear factors, and then set each of those equal to 0 and find your zeros. Now, the other thing that you can do is this. Sometimes what they'll do is, is, is you'll be given the zeros, okay? And then what you have to do is write your polynomial. So you have to go from your zeros and go back to here, okay? So you want to be able to go in one direction, given your polynomial, find your zeros, and then you want to go in the other direction where you have your zeros, and then you need to write a polynomial, okay? So uh, kind of a lot going on, but just wanted to, you know, give you that example. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.